Hey guys, Mr. Decker here. We are back. We're in that updated 2324code.org CS Discoveries Unit 3, and we're looking at Lesson 8 Sprites. So we are moving right along in this curriculum. This unit is long, 28 lessons, so we'll still have 20 to go after we're done with this one. All right, we're on bubble one. It's a prediction bubble. And it says, <clears throat> the code below introduces three new blocks you haven't seen before. Create sprite, set animation, and draw sprites. Throughout this lesson, we're going to be learning more about how these blocks work. Do this. It says, read the code below and try to predict what's going to happen on the screen. Write your predictions in the box, then press the run button to see what happens. All right. Optional, come up with one to two what if questions that you wonder about the code. For example, what if draw sprites was used at the top of the code instead of at the bottom? All right. So we'll come up with one. Uh, what if, so we're coming up with what if questions. What if draw sprites? Oops, not a colon, but a semicolon, was drawn at the top of the code instead of at the bottom. And then uh, let's do one more question. Let's see. On line one, we have variable fruit gets create sprite at 100, 200. So if I click show grid over here, uh, 100x is right around here. 200y is right here. So this is about where that fruit sprite is going to be, and it looks like that's going to be an apple. And then on line three, we have var vegetable gets create sprite at 300x, 200y. So 300x is over here, and 200y is there. And that one, uh, the vegetable is setting the, or the vegetable variable is being used to set the animation to a carrot. So we should have an apple and a carrot appearing on the screen. What question could I ask? I, this is tough because I, I know what's happening here, but uh, I'll humor the question or human the hu human. I'll human it. Uh, we just made a robot face. Uh, so that's where we are with it. Let's see. Uh, let's move along. We'll click run. There's the apple. There's the carrot. And we can move forward to bubble two. All right, <clears throat> bubble two. This level follows a video that you may have watched with your class. If you missed the video, you can watch it in the help and tip help and tips tab of this level. That's right here, and there's the introduction to sprites. Uh, <clears throat> sprites are like containers; they hold several properties that make it easier to manage our animations and make more complex drawings. Right now, our sprites are just gray rectangular containers, and by the end of this lesson, we'll learn how to use even more properties of sprites like images. Okay. So underdo this, it says create a new sprite variable called sprite1. So we're going to go into our sprite store. There you go. And we're going to call this sprite one. It's automatically set, just like most things are, to 200, 200, 200, x and y. And then we're going to go back to the world drawer, grab that draw sprites block, and we're going to draw our sprites on the screen. Without the draw sprites block, nothing's going to happen. Nothing appears. With the draw sprites block, we'll have that gray container show up. And then sprites, just like ellipses, as we've learned in earlier lessons, are drawn from the center. So when you set the x and y, you're setting the x and y for the very center of that sprite. Bubble three, when we get there. All right, this program should create two new sprites, one on the left of the screen, and one on the right, but it's only drawing one of them. You don't need to add any code. We're just rearranging the code already present to make sure that both sprites show up just like this picture over here on the right. All right, 
So right now when we run it, we only have one of our sprite containers showing up. And that's the left sprite, the one that's being drawn at 100x and 200y. And we can see that right here. Um, and remember, you, you can always see the location of your sprite by x and y coordinates right here under the reset and run button. So when you click or when you hold your cursor somewhere on the grid, it tracks where it is down there under that reset button. So right here, we know it's the left sprite because that is sitting right at 100, 200. So if we take this draw sprites block right here and move it down to the bottom, it's now going to draw both. See, now it's drawing the right sprite which is at 300x and 200y, as we can see right there. And the reason why it does that, like if I move this up here to the top, reset run, and that's kind of answering that question from that prediction bubble, bubble one. But <clears throat> if I tell it to draw the sprites, and then I create my sprites, the computer is going to do everything in the same order that it always does from top to bottom, regardless of what our intentions are. If my intention is to have both of the sprites show up, I need to tell it to draw my sprites after I create them. And that is the order that you want your code to be in. And this level follows a video that you may have watched with your class. If you watched, missed the video, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's on the help and tips tab right here if you want to watch the video. It's all about the animation tab. So <clears throat> let's update our code below. So different animations appear for the fruit and vegetable sprites. Uh, here's a little tip. It takes three blocks to put a sprite on the screen. This is a good tip. So create sprite. This block creates a new sprite variable. That's this right here. So this is the first piece of code that you put in there to get your sprite generated. And then you set the animation of the sprite using the set animation block. And all of this should exist over here. And then the final thing that you use is the draw sprites block. And this block tells the animation to draw the sprites on the screen. If you forget it, nothing's going to appear on the screen for you. So right now, uh, on line one, we've got fruit gets create sprite 100x 200y. We have a comment block on line two that's telling us that we're needing to update the fruit animation. So fruit, fruit, fruit. We're setting the animation of fruit to apple, and we have this drop-down box, and we have all of these options there. And then on line five, variable vegetable gets create sprite at 300x 200y. And then we're updating that vegetable animation that we've established on line 5 to be a carrot. And then finally on line 9 down here, we're drawing that, those sprites onto the screen. So when I run this, I get an apple and I get a carrot, just like the code reads out. Now let's see what it's asking us to do. It says, update the fruit animation. Use the drop-down menu in the set animation block to select a different sprite to use. All right, we can do that. That's easy. So on line three, we're setting the fruit sprite to something other than an apple. We're going to stick with, uh, if it, is it going to let me click it? Maybe not. Strawberry? No. Orange? No. Corn? No. What the heck? Let me refresh my page and see if that helps us at all. All right. Okay, now... Let's see. Can we actually do what it's asking us to do? So I click here. Strop. Now it's working. When in doubt, refresh your page. Now we're setting a vegetable. So it wouldn't be an apple. It wouldn't be a strawberry or an orange. Uh, it's Right now it's a carrot. So let's go with broccoli. Run it. There they are. And then an optional challenge, try changing the position of the sprites so they're stacked vertically instead of horizontally. We can do that. So the strawberry looks like it's at 200x and maybe 100y. So we'll flip this, 200 and 100. And then the vegetable 
Looks like it's probably down here around 200x and 300y. So we'll invert these. Reset run. Perfect. So all I did was put a straw, I reset the location of the strawberry from over here to up here at 200x and 100y. And then I moved the broccoli down here to 200x and 300y. And you can see how or where I changed those parameters right here and here. Let's finish and continue. All right, and that puts us on bubble five. And let's see, we are going to use our new sprite blocks to create a student sprite. OK, what blocks do I need again? Here's the reminder. We need that create sprite, set animation block, and draw sprites block. Under do this, it says create a sprite variable called student. So we're going to go into our sprites drawer, grab that variable sprite block, or a variable create sprite block, and we're going to call that student. So there's our variable label there for our sprite. And then, okay, leave that at 200, 200, that's fine. And then we're going to drag out a set animation block. We need to match that variable label, student, student. And then is there, oh, there's lots of students apparently. So let's go over to our animation tab and look at that. We have Hawa, we have Kim, we have Danielle, Jim, Darren, Isabel, Aether or Author, Michaela, Jeff, Joseph, Nico, and Maria. Okay, so. If I want to put Hawa out here and I run it just like that, nothing happens because I forgot to draw the sprite on the screen using my draw sprites block. So I need to go back to my world drawer, grab that draw sprites block, put that down at the bottom, reset run. Okay, cool. And then with that, all of these different animations or sprites are still over here on my animation tab. And I can just populate them as I see fit into my code. And then, you know, whatever we like best, we'll just leave it at that. And it matters not to me. What matters is what you like best and just going with that. I like this, this young lady. She's reading a book. And that's always nice to see. All right, finish and continue. We're moving on to bubble six. And on bubble six, it says this program draws four sprites to the screen. And one of them has an animation from the animation tab. All right. Do this. Run the code to see what happens. So when we run it, we have, all right, we've got a little pink alien down here. And then we've got three sprite containers. So we need to look in the animation tab to see what animations are available to us. So if we go to the animation tab, we've got a bunny, a flybot, and a plain red one. All right. Feel free to alter your animations or choose a new one. Use the set animation command to change the look of your other sprites. All right. So what we need to do first is drag our set animations out here, and we're going to put put them right under each of the variable create sprite blocks. And I'm either going to use my control C, control V, control C, control V, control C, and control V again, just to make sure that uh, my labels are matching where they need to. Okay, so for this first one, and that is the top left sprite, we can go, we'll go ahead and change that to the bunny. We'll change the top right sprite to a flybot, and let's change the bottom left sprite to that plain red one. And we run it, there we go. Everything's showing up as it should be. Now on your animation tab, like it says here, 
we can change the look of our sprites. We can feel free to alter our animations or choose a new one. So if I wanted to choose a new one, I could just click this add animation block or add an add animation button down here. I could find an animal. I could go back to all my categories. There are robots, retro, faces, fantasy, food, animals, aquatic objects, backgrounds, cards and games, buildings, emojis, people, music, icons, household objects, germs. That's an interesting thing to add to this. Um, school objects, sports, stickers, tools, vehicles, video games, all right. Uh, let's let's go into the fantasy drawer. That looks fun. Oh, fantasy is where the aliens live, I guess. We've got monsters here. We've got flamey guys. We've got a scary pumpkin thing. Oh, cool. We've got lots of Halloween characters. I really like this pirate guy right here. Yarr. Uh, this witch looks super cool. Oh, cool. We've got some like chibi looking guys with the giant heads. I like that. Let's see. we will pick one of these chibi guys to put on. Let's go with... I like this ranger. This ranger looks cool. Let's say we're done. I'm going to uh, change the name of this. Oh, will it not? Yeah, it will. Ranger. I'm going to call that the ranger. It's an elven ranger. Look at that ear. Pointy ear. Okay, so back over here. Uh, so now that I've added that animation, it should add that to my drop down. So I'm actually going to change the alien to that ranger now and run it. And there's my ranger. Sweet. All right, so let's finish that one and we'll continue. And that puts us on bubble seven. All right, let's see. This program draws three sprites on the screen, but it's not working yet. So the wrong sprite is in the front, and one sprite's animation isn't even showing up. So here's what we're trying to recreate, I imagine. We want to have this crab soda, an ice cream cone, a vanilla one, and get ready in the front. So if I run it, OK, so yeah, the that looks nothing like this over here. So we've got lots of things to fix. All right, so message is being drawn up here. So maybe I want, so just like uh, when we're drawing shapes on the screen, the computer's probably reading this in the same order like it reads the shapes, so reading it top to bottom. If I want that message to appear on top, I probably want to create it last. Let's see if that works. Yes, it does. Perfect. All right. So yeah, uh, I'm going to show you how I did that again. So Control Z is your undo button on here. And I'm just lassoing the first two lines of code where that get ready text is being made. And I'm plopping it down right there above the draw sprites block but underneath those other two sprites that are being created. So that's that gets that result. And then I need to get my ice cream cone over here. So let's do that. Uh, let's run it, turn on the grid. I want my ice cream cone right at 300x and 200y. So dessert. I imagine the dessert is that ice cream cone. So, uh, oh, wait. I see, so dessert, dessert. Is it being funky with me again? It won't let me type in there. So let me refresh this page again. Code.org, you're being difficult right now. All right, dessert. Let's match those, so run. Yeah, oh, wow, okay. Well, that just fixed everything. Oh, I see, so drink and drink were matching. And that's the soda one. And OK, so you have to make sure, always make sure your variable label is matching everywhere you're trying to use it. So dessert and dessert were not set correctly because this said drink, remember? And that's what was causing that to be funky. It wasn't that this was 
set up wrong in terms of where X and Y are located on those blocks, the problem was right here all along. Learning how to use those labels correctly fixes a lot of problems. Okay, so let's finish and continue. And we're now looking at bubble eight, and it looks like we've got some matching to do here. All right. So let's see. I'm assuming, okay, we're matching the image to the code that it, we're matching the image to the code that it will produce. Okay. All right. So background sky blue being drawn at the top. And then draw sprites here before we've created anything. So this is this one. It's going to draw a background, and then there, the computer has no sprites to draw yet because you put the draw sprites block too high. All right. Uh, let's see. I think background sky blue, create a dog sprite, but the set animation is below the draw sprite, so I think it's going to be this one here. And then we have two more to place. On this one, draw sprites is at the bottom as it should be. Background's at the top where it should be. Everything else. So I think that is going to match there. And then on this one, the background block is on the top where it should be. We're creating our dog sprite. We're setting the dog sprite to the corgi. And then we're drawing the sprites there instead of drawing the sprites for everything. So only the Corgi is going to show up for that one. So there's your answers for that. I'm going to leave it right here without hitting the submit button, because when I teach this, I need my kids to be able to do it in class without seeing those answers. So let's head over to bubble nine, the practice bubble. But you would have, if you're doing this at home, are doing this with me, uh, then make sure you hit that submit button. Otherwise, it won't record your answers or save your answers there. All right, so let's go through, through these practices, and we've got six of them. That's a lot for a practice page. All right, we're on bubble nine here. We've got lots of practices to do, A, B, C, D, E, and F, and then we'll move on to bubble 10. All right, for practice A, we're debugging the missing sprites. Look at the code below. Uh, we can see that many sprites are created, and yet when we run the program, nothing shows up. Can you fix it? OK, nothing's showing up. Wow, look at all these drawers we got. Wow, look at all this math. We've got comment block. Whoa, all the drawing. Whoa, so much to think about now. But the only problem is there's no draw sprites. Run it, and there's everything. If I don't have a draw sprites there, like in the original code, uh, nothing shows up. All you got to do is put a draw sprites there, run it, and there's everything. And it looks like this purple bunny is just happy to be running away from these airplanes, apparently. A little odd. All right. Sprite animations were on B. We've got a dinosaur and a angry-looking sun there. That's an awfully derpy-looking dinosaur, by the way. All right, we're debugging the sprite animation error. Errors are being hit whenever we try to run our program. It looks like something's wrong with our animations. Can you try and fix it? Let's see, let's run it. Oh, what's our error? On line seven, we we're unable to find an animation named Tyrannosaurus. Please make sure the animation exists. Um, let's see. Ah, there's a misspelling here. So it looks like whoever came here before us didn't put that extra in. They typed it out instead of using the dropdown. So if I hit Tyrannosaurus, reset run. Oh, there's another error. Error nine, uh, on line 9 here. Unable to find an animation named Sun. Please make sure that animation exists. So let's see. Sun with a capital S. All right, let's try that. Oh, another error, line 11. We can't figure out what grass 2 is. Let's see. What's wrong with... Oh, I see what the error is. Do you see what the error is? 
that's typed in there correctly, but look at all these other ones. They have quotation marks around them, and this one does not. So making sure we select it from the dropdown, that puts those... Uh. <sighs> I'm tired, boss. I'm tired. Okay. What's wrong with this one? Unable to find the animation named Grass 3. Well, why can't you find it then? Oh, because there isn't a Grass 3. It's because there's a Grass 4, and that's what we needed to use. And there's our derpy, derpy man, the dinosaur. Oh, there's a cute little ladybug. Don't get stepped on, ladybug. And then here's our son. Let's finish. Let's continue. And we've, we're helping the cherries. Helping the cherries out. Let's see. Duh. Run it. We've got one cherry showing up. We've got two sprite containers showing up. What's wrong? Sprite, sprite, sprite. Cherry, cherry, cherry. So with this one, uh, the program below is trying to draw the same sprite in three different positions, but only one of them is showing up. What's happening here? And can you fix it? I know what's happening. Do you know what's happening? All right. So we're going to fix these. We're, let's give them better names, like Cherry 1, Cherry 2. Because I, I really don't like naming things just Sprite. It's really boring. It doesn't tell anybody anything about what we're doing. I'm putting a Sprite on the screen. Congratulations about your Sprite. What is your Sprite? It's a Sprite kind of Sprite. Uh, is it a Sprite Cherry? Cherry Sprite? Sprite Cherry, sir. That's what I would like. All right, let's see. Control C, Control V, Control C, Control V, Control C, Control V. And now the cool thing about this, we only have one animation over here on the animation tab, and it's just one cherry, but you can use it three times, the same animation, because we're giving it a new variable name each time and using that label or variable name uh, and matching them down here on these set animations, even though we only have one option for that animation. All right, cool. Let's finish and continue. All right, moving along here, sprite order. We're going to change the code so that we can see the ladybug and the snail. Okay, so Let's change the sprite order. Something's wrong with the scene below. Some of the sprites are behind other sprites when they should be in front of them. Let's run it. Yeah, it looks like the cactus is growing out of the snail, and it looks like the ladybug is scared to say hello. It's a little shy ladybug. All right. Here's what it should look like. So let's see. Let's... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get all of these set underneath their create sprite blocks. So grass 2 is good. Snail, let's move you up here. And ladybug, let's put you there with your create sprite block. So that's not going to fix it. We still have to change some more of the order of this thing. Uh, what I want to do is I'm going to lasso grass 2 and grass 1 so that I can grab them all in one go. And I'm going to put them at the very top of the code so that it's now going to be drawing the, sn the snail and the ladybug after it draws the grass. But that's not going to fix everything because our cactus is still in front of the snail. So I still need to lasso the cactus, put that at the top, and now it looks like this image. And again, this is just illustrating the fact that the computer is going to read the code in the order that you put it in. So you've always got to make sure that as you're layering things onto the screen, you're drawing the things that are in the back first and drawing the things that you want to see in the front last. All right, let's continue here. We're moving on to the fish scene. We're going to get creative and make ourselves a fish scene. All right, so right now we've got blue fish, gray fish, and green fish. And 
I'm getting a phone call, so I'm going to go ahead and answer that, and I'll be right back with you. And we're back. All right, sorry about that. But we're here, and we're ready to make our fish scene. So let's see. What shall we do? What shall we do? Let's go to the animation tab. Well, first, let's draw a background. And we'll make this like light blue, like water blue. And then let's put some stuff down at the bottom. So let's find some things. Aquatic objects. There we go. We've got some under the sea stuff. Oh, cool. It lets you select multiple things. That's neat. Um, yeah. Let's just add those three things in. Uh, da -dun, da -dun, da -dun. They have pretty good names, so I'm not going to rename them. But we've got to add some sprites. So um, I'm going to make sure these are drawn with the fish in front of them. So I'm going to go ahead and get these set up up here. And there are three of them. And we're going to not get too complex with these. We'll say like uh, under one under two Just typing these in here real quick and then we'll set these animations Just making sure that I select a different one each time. We're going to run those, and we've got all this craziness going on here. So let's uh, bring those down the screen some. And to do that, we're going to add to Y. So let's make these more like 350, 350. 350 and then let's move them around on X so that they're not all just sitting in the center. We'll make put this one at 50, that one at 200, this one at 350. And then when we run it, we've got our fishy guys swimming up above all this aquatic stuff. And that's good enough for me. All right, we'll finish right there. Actually, I'm going to keep playing. I want to see... Okay, Sprite Store doesn't have much in it yet. Let's combine ideas. Create your own scene using both drawings and sprites. I'm going to not do that for the purpose of time. Let's finish here. And on Bubble 10, this is the assessment bubble. We know that because we have the purple check mark up there and it even says assessment on it for us just to remind us that this is where we get graded so we're going to use what we've learned to create our own sprites and the example is just one way to complete the level so decide for yourself what you want your sprites to look like we got a little crab guy ah, he's cute holding a fork and a knife that's awesome it's dinner time he says all right Go to the animation tab and add at least two animations to your project. So we'll go to the animation tab. There's nothing here. Uh, let's get creative, shall we? Let's go into the animals drawer. I feel like my spirit animal is a fox. I'm a red-headed dude. I like orange things. It's a great, fantastic color. We stand out everywhere we go. Here's my fox. All right. Oh, there was another fox that I saw that I really liked too. And I might use that instead. Man, look how... Oh, man, there's a ton of stuff in here now. I like this one. I'm going to go with that one. I'm going to get rid of this guy. Sorry, dude. Just not good enough for today. I like this one a lot. Alright, and then I want to put it in a... 
forest. Do we have a forest background? Let's see. We kind of have a wintry forest there. We might come back to that one. Here's a meadow. Let's go with the meadow for sure. All right, meadow. I'm just going to call this one fox to make it a little more simple. And meadow one is a fine name for that. Uh, let's grab maybe one more thing. Let's see, what else could be in a forest? It's getting kind of close to Halloween. I remembered seeing all of those Halloween creatures here. I really like this witch. This bug guy is pretty fun. This clown is creepy. Um, let's see, forest. A ghost in a forest. Let's go with the witch in the forest. I feel like that makes the most sense. We'll just call her a witch. All right, there we go. So, all right, so down here, go to the animation tab, add at least two animations to your project. In the code tab, create at least two sprites in two different places on the screen, assign each sprite a different animation, and draw your sprites to the screen. So let's go to sprites then. That's where we'll be for the most of this. All right, so sprite. We're going to put the uh, meadow sprite as our background. Let's go ahead and grab draw sprites as well. We're going to match that label, grab the meadow, run it. There's my meadow. And then let's get the fox on here. And we're going to move him. But first, let's just make sure he's showing up. And he's ginormous. All right, so I'm going to kind of um, let's see. I'm going to switch to text. And we're going to use a scale. And let's see. I'm just looking at the dot notation for this real quick. Let's see, sprite.scale gets a value and you put the semicolon at the end of it. So it's going to be fox.scale gets 0.2 semicolon. We'll show blocks, reset run. Oh, now he's kind of floating in the air. Well, let's move him. Uh, we'll set him on this rock right here. How about that? So the center of him would be about right there. So 298, 329. 298, 329. Let's see how that looks. Perfect. He's so cute. And I'm going to put my witch right here, kind of looking over at the fox. So let's get her going and let's get all these instructions out of the way and we're gonna she's a witch she turned me into a newt let's see for everyone who got that reference I applaud you I absolutely applaud you which and then she's gonna show up really big and actually covering up my fox I want her over here and I'm gonna make her smaller x 50 Actually, x68, y282. 68, 282. And the way I'm figuring where I'm putting things is like putting my cursor there and then reading down here under that reset button. So let's, we're going to lasso that, control C, control V, which, whoop, not a W titch, but a witch. Uh, we'll make her 0 0.2 as well. We're going to make her a lot bigger than that. So another thing with scale, and you'll learn this later in your class, but you're learning it right now with me. 
Um, let's make her a little bit. Well, that the, the kind of like makes it look like the tree is too small, but the fox size. There we go. I think that looks good. Zero point four, and you can actually use the uh, hundredths place as well. But I think I like her at point four. There we go, because she's kind of further back, right? Let's move her up just a tid, just a tad bit. So on Y, we'll decrease this to maybe 260. And let's move her further to the left, a little bit to the left, 55 maybe. Now I want to bring her back down, so let's do 270. I'm just kind of perfecting perfecting it. I like that a lot. That looks good. All right. So here's the witch. A little fox there. I love it. Okay. I'm happy with my scene. Continue. I feel like I'd get a pretty good grade on that. Right, Teach? All right. Find an image online. We're going to upload an image from another website to complete a kite scene. All right, we can probably figure that out. So let's run it. Okay, yeah, we've got a, our string from our for our kite is just going right up to a sprite container. We've got a kite. There's no kite over here. It's just using drawing blocks to make everything here. We do have our draw sprites down here. So the problem is. Uh, our variable kite, our kite variable, or our kite create sprite doesn't have anything it can be. So you can also use the animation tab to upload. You are going to make a flying kite. You can search the web for an image. It says search online for an image of a kite. Small images with transparent backgrounds work best. Download your kite image. Open the animations tab. Click add a new sprite and then Upload image to upload an image. Select the file from your computer. Rename your image so it's easy to remember. Rename it. Click. OK. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to open a new tab. I'm just going to type in uh, like cartoon kite. We'll go to the images tab. And then to make sure that you're grabbing a transparent one, you can go to tools and then color, and then select transparent, and you should see the transparent ones. Let's go back over here. Um, actually, I want to go back all the way back out. There's the kite it's using. That's a weird place for the string to be attached, but it's not that big of a deal, I guess. Let's see. There's lots of options, but we'll we'll just go with this guy right here. And I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to save image as. Uh, it's a PNG file, so I feel like that will work. I'm just going to call it kite cart. Save that to my pictures. Save it. All right. And then let's head back over here. Animation tab, new animation, upload image, uh, pictures. There's kite cart. Let's open it. And there's our kite. Kitecart.png is the name of that. And then it should let us choose it. And then when I run it, it's huge humongous. So there's that sprite.scale block that we were just using on bubble 10. So kite.scale. And anything less than 0 makes it smaller. So you've got to put a 0 point and then your value. So let's try 0 0.1, because that's ginormous. Reset run. <laughs> that might be too small. Uh, 0 0.3 uh, and let's bring that down some so 
on y, we'll add to y, let's try like 78. Let's try 85. There we go. Well, it almost gets it all on there. 88. Nope. Not, let's just go 91. There we go. Now it's all in there. So now we've got our kite, and it's showing up in a decent size all in the frame. Let's finish and continue. Oh, did it need us to do anything else, actually, before we go? Rename your image so it's easy to remember. Back in code mode, blah, blah, blah. Don't worry if your kite image is too big. Learn how to fix that in the next level. I just fixed it. We learned how to do kite.scale. We're good. And you added the block for us. All right, draw your own character. That's going to be fun. So you can also use the animation tab to draw your own image. You're going to make your own character by drawing it. Do this. We're going to open the animations tab. We're going to add a new animation and then draw it. Uh, we're going to draw our own picture. And then we're going to rename our picture so it's easy to remember. To rename it, click the text below the picture. Back in code mode, we've been doing that. Back in code mode, use sprite.setAnimation to make your character sprite show your new animation. For now, don't worry if your character picture is too big or small. You'll learn how to resize sprites next lesson. All right. So I'm going to get all that out of my way now that I've read the instructions. And we're going to do new animation, draw your own. So now we can draw a sprite out here. Control Z gets rid of that. And let's see, uh, what do we want to draw? I'm not the world's most creative person, but I do have fun making stuff. So let's see, you can use these to determine how big your pencil is. Uh, there's like a one-eyed monster guy for you. Control Z, Control Z, Control Z. And we'll start with this one. I don't want to try to be too detailed with this, but we'll make something fun. Uh, let's see. We'll make a big face. And let's give him some eyebrows. And let's see, we need to draw a nose. We'll go back to black here. And then we're going to give him a mouth. There we go. And then let's use the thinner pencil for the contour of those lips. There you go. And then we're going to use the paint bucket to color in some stuff. Oh, I need to give him pupils. Boop. And boop. There you go. And then let's take care of his irises by just drawing. There we go. All right, that works. Fill that in. Okay. And then paint bucket, we're going to grab uh, like an off white color, a little more white than that for here and here and here. And then <clears throat> paint bucket, and let's make the eyes nice, blue, nice and bluey. Oh, you know what? I did the wrong part. White. I like that it remembers the colors that I'm using. There we go. And then let's see. I have some lips. Let's see. Uh, 
with color. That should work. Oh, that's way too bright pink. It's a little better. I'm, like I said, not an expert, right? So here's my face. It's kind of creepy and sad looking. <laughs> um, let's kind of draw a big circle around it, or should we just roll with that? Um, I'm just going to call this doubt because it looks, or no, let's call it concerned. It's a very concerned looking face. All right. So now that we've drawn our weird face, uh, we'll just name that face. 200, 200, we'll select concerned here, we'll run it. <laughs> okay, there you go. We have a very concerned looking face just floating totally. Is that all we needed to do there? For now, don't worry if your character picture is too big or small, you'll learn how to resize sprites in the next lesson. We learned how to do that today in this video. Oh my gosh, that's terrible. I apologize sincerely for the awfulness of all of that. <laughs> but it is what it is. Okay. I know that I've got a lot of artists in my class, and uh, that's going to get a lot of chuckles. Okay. Add your own images to the scene. Use the animation tab to draw your own images and then add them to the scene. Oh no, you're gonna make me draw again? You know I'm bad at this. Okay, run it. Let's actually look at what we have here. So I'm gonna draw uh, a couple of aliens, I guess, this time. Oh my goodness, why is it making me draw, man? Uh, okay, so let's draw an alien, all right. Um, We'll draw a complete alien this time. This time, like I like I just drew an alien. I'm going to... Oh my gosh, guys. Control Z. Alien neck. I, this is not working. I need, the, I need this one. I need the small pin. Okay. Uh, let's see. We're going to draw... Some big eyeballs kind of poking up out of his head. I'm going to try to do this a little bit quickly in the interest of time, right? And we'll just draw kind of a blobby body. Connect that. All right. Um, <clears throat> okay, so eyeballs. Aliens are weird. They're just weird in general. I'm going to control Z that little mess up there. All right. Yep. There, sure. And then let's see. Needs a mouth, right? There's his mouth. And I'm just going to put two little dots for his nose. Maybe like that. There we go. Maybe one above. That works perfect. He's got a nose now. He can smell. He can see. He can eat stuff. All right. Now let's paint him. We'll make him really stand out. Make him a little like bright yellowy gold color maybe yeah that would work paint there you go and then inside of his mouth we'll draw a tongue back to my pen oh give my red tongue Go. We'll get a darker red 
to go kind of up here and again I'm no artist There's his tongue, and then inside the rest of, rest of his mouth it's going to be like a really dark red. There we go, and then we'll make his eyes here, put little uh, red dots in the middle. And then for the rest of it we'll just paint it like an off-white. There you go. There you go. All right. There's that alien. Hello, alien. And then we're going to add another one. Uh, I think what I want to do is I'm going to duplicate him. And then I'm going to color him a different. This one, I'm going to flip it. So let's learn how to do that. I'll flip him that way. So I just click this button over here that flips it. I'm actually going to crop it as well. That's this button. And we're going to change this guy's colors. We'll make him like a bright blue. There you go. And then we'll go back to the code. Well, before we do, it's going to be blue alien code. And then we need to sprite set those animations. Alien 1 and alien 2. And then we're going to match those labels. Control C, Control V. Alien 1 will be yellow, Alien 2 will be blue. Run it. And then there's our aliens floating around in space. So, see, they didn't even need that much detail, really. Let's finish and continue. And then down here, these are free plays, so we'll leave those alone. That's up to you to do if you want to. But we did A, B, and C together, and we had fun. This one was, like, I'm actually still embarrassed about this. That's awful. Like, real bad. Just, I'm going to make it bigger just to exemplify the bad. So let's show text. Now that we know how to do this, so uh, it's going to be face.scale gets, uh, let's make it like 2.5. Let's just embarrass ourselves further by making the concerned face even bigger. <laughs> there you go. All right. We'll leave it at that. I had fun with this lesson. Uh, I'm a little bit embarrassed about this lesson, but my embarrassment means that you guys are having an even better time. So, yeah. All right. I'll see you guys next time for Lesson 9. This was Lesson 8, Sprites, updated to the new 2324 curriculum on code.org, CS Discoveries Unit 3, the Animations and Games Unit. I hope you guys had as much fun as I did.